What's up? It's Talking Baseball, and we are here with special guest Joshua Kuznick. Nailed it. What's going on? We're here at Winter Meetings. We have our, our first uh, guest, or second guest on Talking Baseball, but your second time speaking with us. If you're just a Talking Baseball fan, Josh came on Talking Yanks last Winter Meetings, and it was a uh, fan favorite interview. Despite all odds. Despite all odds. And you're looking <laughs> great. We've, gave, we've given him a Roosevelt's Bob Ross shirt. Uh, second time we've given a guest a shirt from our sponsor, Roosevelt's, and it's looked really good. Fits it my, just looks natural. Fits my sunglasses. Yeah, you look like you could go snowboarding with that on, and then you have that whole vibe like you own the mountain. I feel like uh, somebody told me yesterday I look like a porn director. You could pull that off. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing a beanie to the winter meetings in San Diego. I, I got all kinds of issues here with clothing. Now, now that you have the headphones on, it kind of I mean, I had, plays. He I had headphones on earlier. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, before I put these on, I had those on. <laughs> yeah, you just throw, like, grow out a patchy beard or a little mustache, and you're good. You're oh, oh, man. I ugh, I started shaving again. I look way better. Shaving or with Sh the beard? Without the beard. Oh, I'm already oh. I'm already old. Okay. I'm or, I'm like I'm 37 in human years, but like in baseball years, I'm like 300. Yeah, you've been an agent since you were 18. Jake, give the full introduction. Yeah, I, well, I'll bring up the whole bio. No, uh, <laughs> Josh is uh, an agent. Yeah. Well, but that's the tip of the iceberg, as he's about to tell you. I'm more um, than an agent. I the the biggest flex, and I I did I remembered this last night. Oh God! Is that you? You were the the youngest agent ever, dude. I would. It's true. I would I would have shirts and I, wear that around, and it, you made too. <laughs> if I wasn't 37 and I didn't squander all that youthful potential, I might have. <laughs> You're like, wow, you did this thing once a long time ago. I'm like, yeah, but like, what did you do after that? I'm like, yeah, was once the youngest agent making a shirt. <laughs> Can I trademark that? That might even be that might be better when you're older. I'm gonna make a Twitch handle and just start streaming as the youngest agent. I'll be some forty year old guy. <laughs> and the, this guy's the youngest agent. He's like, old. He's so grizzled and bitter for no reason. <laughs> At one point, he was the youngest agent. I was, I was, and it was weird. And it's funny telling younger agents that now they're like, "I got certified when I was 23." Like, ha ha, surprise! <laughs> I was <Good>. 14. <laughs> it's a, I can't curse on this. Damn it. No, you can. Oh, oh I can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, this is going to be a hard one. It's like, surprise, motherfucker. I'm 20. I was, I was 18. Do you still got the motherfucker wallet? Oh, that's right. You guys saw that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> there you go. Damn. What the fuck are you sitting on, Your Josh? Your Costanza in us, You're going to have a bad back sitting on that thing. I have a bad back without it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rock. How many things are in that wallet? A lot of things. A lot of, was, a lot of, was, uh, there's a lot of debt in that wallet. That was <laughs> dense. There was a lot of debt in that wallet. I don't know if you heard. The economy isn't helping everybody. Yeah. So, so what's, I, I mean, we, we're going to do a lot of jokes, and you do jokes as well. But, I mean, get, dance, give, monkey, give, dance. Give, give, give people the gambit. Like I, oh, me? I would, oh. I, normally I'd say give your elevator pitch, but your elevator pitch would it's be gonna terrifying. Be like, to it's going to be so like three hours. They'd be what? jamming the open the door button, like, yeah. get me the fuck off this Which elevator. is funny because, like, when I get on an elevator, I noticed this the other day, actually. Like, the first thing I do is not hit my floor. It's hit door close. Same. Always. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, a terrible person. Like, I'll, like, hear people, like, Ten feet behind me, I'll be like, "Oh, what floor am I going in?" My brain, I'll be like, "Door closed." Yeah, I think yeah. you're allowed to be selfish in elevators. I think that's a, like a, a, a an area where you're like, "Let's take care of myself." Right my now. favorite part of that is though, is if it doesn't work and someone comes in the elevator, Ooh. people are like, "Oh, it's really awkward." I'm like, "I don't care. I was trying to close the door on them anyway." Yeah. 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 Except <laughs> this time, I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, I definitely tried to do that." Now what? <laughs> All right. So what if they do get in the elevator with you and and they say, eh, "Kind sir, what do you do? What's your full pitch?" Um. I always tell people I'm a stand-up comic, especially when I'm flying. I don't like talking about baseball with strangers because I don't like ruining it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to talking baseball. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like ruining. Well, that's the thing. I, I have a niche because no one, uh, no one tells the truth, and I hate that. And uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like a lot of this industry. I think, I think there's a lot of lying, and I don't like perpetuating that. So I don't, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't lie. So. That pisses people off sometimes, and I'm not trying to be edgy with it, but um, there's so much bullshit with this job, being an agent and and lying to just get money. I don't. I decided I don't want to do that. Yeah, anymore. I feel like being an agent and as like a professional like bullshitter. It's worse than that though. Like I could deal with that. Um, it's just 
you, you're, you become so detached from reality when you're doing things for the job and you justify it by saying, oh, but that's not my real life. That's just me as an agent. I'm doing these things in the capacity of my job. And it's like the Nazi excuse. Oh, I was just following orders. I totally get it. Like it, we're in the content game and a lot of people are like, oh, that's just me on the mic. That's just like I just go into character. So that wasn't I don't yeah. actually believe that. And it's like we don't really do that. Yeah. Like, no, we try to like just say things we actually believe they're they're right. dramatized. Right. You know, you're not talking like this. Sure. If you could not ruin baseball for all our fans, that would be perfect. But let's I know that there's a question we for anyone. Anyone that is just listening and just hearing about you. Yeah. They're going to be interested. Like, who has he represented? So so I, I was an agent for uh, I started in 02. So it'll be 18 years next year. And uh, I signed my, the very first client I ever signed was a guy named Carmen Cali, a lefty pitcher for the Cardinals who got seven innings in the big leagues. And uh, it's the first client I ever had. And he got to the big leagues and I was like, wow, this is easy. I'm so good at this. And then like five years later, I had my second big leaguer. I'm like, wow, this was not easy. I'm stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was an agent for a long time. When I was in college, uh, I did stand up. And before all of that, how I got into all this, I sold autographs. I was a bad boy for the Orioles in spring training. I uh, stole Cal, Cal stole, Ripken's helmet. I stole Cal Ripken's batting helmet, which we'll get into, I'm sure. <laughs> um, like, not in a Ocean's Eleven style theft. I worked for the Orioles. So, well, I, I mean, it wasn't it, too bad. It was pretty good. It was actually. Bernie was, Mac worked at the casino. Like, it he was, was in on it. It actually was kind of an Ocean's Eleven like scheme stealing that helmet. It wasn't like, but I was working for the Orioles at the time as a child. So, it wasn't like, you know, yeah. theft in his adult sense. <laughs> no. But, uh... No, I used to steal stuff when I was a kid, too. You yeah. Got, you gotta test it out. Yeah, you gotta be like, oh, yeah. my parents are right, I shouldn't steal. But yeah. anyway, I, I was a comic, uh, I sold autographs, uh, I scouted, I did scouting for a team, and I realized I hated it because there was no money. And, uh, I asked the guy that gave me my first job in baseball, he actually found me at a minor league game where I was getting autographs when I was 17 years old of Miguel Cabrera. Eight, how old was I? No, no, I was... I was 19. I, 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 was, I was getting Dontrell Willis and Miguel Cabrera's autograph, and the scout saw me getting Dontrell's autograph, and he asked me, how do you know who that guy is? And I'm like, oh, I'm a nerd. I like Baseball America. This is before the internet existed. And uh, it was before Google. And um, he's like, if you ever need anything when you go to school, let me know. And when I got to FSU, I stayed in touch with the guy. His name is Joe Butler with the White Sox. And he's like, you know, if you want to scout guys for us, like as a part-time guy, let me know. And I started looking at JUCO players uh, and, and guys in Tallahassee for them yeah, a long time ago. And I mean, was there no training? Was no, it just like, no. just go tell me a guy? And yeah. Like, yeah it was that like, guy hit the ball? Yeah, seriously. I self-taught myself how to scout. And it really <laughs> came from figuring out who the minor leaguers, like the autographs I wanted to go get. I needed to figure out who was going to be good. So that's how I figured out how to do that, like my rough – Scouting, and then I got more refined over the years, obviously. But um, yeah. what are some favorite scout terms, like just like body type descriptions? Oh God! Um, can you do Jake? Yeah. Jake, can you stand up for him? I mean, when you see this, what is the physique here in, in the scouting in world? Scout terms. That's a bad lower half. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's you're not you're not seeing the worst part. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, that's a bad lower half. Uh, subpar runner, average body. Hey, I'll take that. Not bad. <laughs> All day. Uh, <laughs> below average arm strength, probably. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got it. How's your aptitude? <laughs> You're a good scout. <laughs> <laughs> Low. Don't sign him. Yeah. <laughs> Baseball aptitude and, and uh, makeup is, like, the hardest thing to, like, evaluate for sure. If I, if I was a scout, I'd just constantly be like, not that guy. And you can have a bunch of hits if you say, don't get that guy. You yeah, just stay away but, from him. I'd be like, no, he's bad. But team, he, no, That guy, also bad. Teams need players. So, if, like, you don't sign anybody, you don't have a job. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I've, I've I, would, got, I dabble. You <laughs> mentioned baseball aptitude, and I mean, I, I think it's something that gets overlooked so much. Is there's there's so many guys that are talented, and like the further we've gotten into this baseball world, that like you you'll hear a guy talk about someone, and they'll be like, "That dude was so talented, he just didn't have the brain." Like, would you would you rather <laughs> would you rather have a client that was like fifty fifty? He makes it to the big leagues, but I don't know sharp dude friendly yeah. like he he gets it or would you rather have someone who's like this guy could be a potential all-star but no what's going on between no, the, his ears he's the, an the, idiot the first one 100 yeah. percent. i've represented both and no part of me ever wants the super talented moron ever again yeah ever. it's not worth it there's not enough money in the world to make it worth it like i spent my whole life dealing with stuff like that is it just babysitting or like how how does that go it's Everything <laughs> babysitting's easier. Um, <laughs> like not killing a child feels easier than this. Um, but 
No. I mean, you hear that a lot. Like, you hear, like, the most talented guys don't make it to the bigs. Because, no, they don't. Because it's, like, it's one of the more demanding oh. jobs oh, to wait. go through the minor leagues and play every day and live off peanut no, no, butter no, no, sandwiches. No, 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 this is good content here. So, I learned a long time. Strap in. Yeah, no, really, this is baseball content. I didn't think we were going to get here this soon. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I learned this from Murray Cook, the former GM of the Yankees and former GM of the Expos and, and uh, Reds. He was actually the only guy in history to work for, like, GM – to be the GM for George Steinbrenner and Mard Schott, which is awesome. Oof, wow. Yeah, brilliant guy. He drafted Randy Johnson. Like, this guy's still around scouting for the Tigers. Randy Johnson sucked in high school, though, so... But he drafted him, and then yeah. and then Dombrowski traded him. It he was... went to the town I lived in, Randy oh. Johnson. He's ashamed of it. He doesn't admit it. He figured it out. He um, donated the shed to the baseball field. Well, that's nice of him. Eric, no, Eric, because he's like a millionaire, and he donated like well, a fucking I went, shed. I went to the same high school as Eric Hosmer and a bunch of guys, and I've known Haas for years, and I remember when the school, I should not tell this. Um, <laughs> I remember, yeah, we already got there, too. Um, I remember when the school asked him for a donation, like, because they didn't treat him great, like, after the fact. They tried to exploit it a lot. Like, I can say that about my high school. I, I love my high school, but, like, you know, they're like, oh, he's super starting out. Let's take. Yeah. And um, they were going to name the baseball field after him, and they still haven't done it yet. And I'm like, oh, that's that's not good. Yeah. Because, like, you, I'm sure you can imagine, there are not many better baseball players to come out of my high school than Eric Hosmer. Yeah. <laughs> so Sorry. that was that. was that. But they're like I was saying about Murray um, Cook, he's actually in the Canadian uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, which needs way more love and support and financing. Um, but he's, he's a member of the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, and Murray told me a long time ago, I had a first-round pick. In 2010, I think he's on the Yankees now, this kid. Um, Kellen Deglin. Do you remember him? He's Deglin. in double-A with the Yankees now. Deglin, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. I got fired, like, real quick after the draft, but I, I represented this kid. We had a bad falling out, and he, he never got out of double-A, like, 10 years later. Like, I, he just didn't make it. And uh, I was never more impressed with an amateur player in my career than that kid. Like, I flew to, oh, Br- really? yeah, I, I flew to British Columbia to go scout him. I, I signed him. I got him a million dollars. And... Um, when he got to Pro Bowl, as soon as he got his signing bonus, he was terrible. Like, mm. He just could not replicate what he did as an amateur. And <laughs> I asked Murray Cook, like, you're Canadian. You scouted this kid. What's the deal? What did I miss? Like, I don't, I don't understand. He has all the – he checks all the boxes, the makeups there. Like, I'm not wrong. What, what happened? Right. And he goes, there's three kinds of players that fit in a, there's three kinds of players that fit into every bracket. There are players that are happy to get drafted – they're happy. There are players. The second one is there are players that are happy to put on a uniform and tell people they play baseball. And then the third category is big leaguers. And every single player that you look at are going to fall into one of those three categories, and you got to figure out what they are. And it works every single time. It's like the easiest scouting advice I ever got in my life, and by far the best. Is he a big leaguer? That's the question. Yeah, but you got to figure out which of the three, though. It can't yeah. just be, is he a big leaguer? It's like, oh, is he a guy that likes to tell people he plays baseball? Is he a guy that's happy to get a million dollars out of high school? Is he a guy that wants more? And I yeah, because if if the step is just to get like signed, then mm-hmm. they achieve their goal, right? And those guys don't make it ever. Yeah. ever. Dave, David Cohn in his book talks about that, and he said like his goal was just to have a minor league career, like, and then then he realized like, wait, and then I can do more. And all his buddies on the Royals got drafted, but he he did kind of talk about that. And I was like, that's kind of interesting because like you always hear the opposite, like that was just like step one, you know? No, they they there are guys that play baseball that just like telling people they play baseball they go out they party they live like the the semi big league life in the minors telling girls chasing going out and they don't make it and then there are guys that try really hard that give everything and aren't good enough and then they're big leaguers yeah so your list of guys is uh brantley uh, I, I worked for brantley over the years kenley jansen jeremy jeffress carlos swai seth lugo i was just looking it up because we interviewed him max burt yeah, I worked for Max. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, why I, I was lo- trying to find his name because you you had him on the show. Yeah, I was like, what was that kid's name? I love Max. He got to Double A this year. Yeah, he was yeah. fun. We had talked to him on Talking Yanks last year. He was a Gold Glove winner in college. He can yeah, pick. he can pick it. I he was can, gonna say he can pick it. He can pick it. He's got to got to keep improving with his bat. But he's good. And I actually just signed a kid who was a, uh, a low A South Atlantic League All Star for the Yankees this year, Mickey Gasper. We asked Max when we talked to him. We were like. So uh, how'd you get, like, hooked up with Kuznick? Like, that's a vibe you have to, like, be, like, you know what I mean? I'm sure you come to some of these young kids, and they're like, what the fuck, like, that guy? Yeah, no, I got that. But, I'm, but then I'm, I'm sure there's others that are like, yes, yeah, no, that I, is who I want and who I need. Yeah, there, there's a niche for everybody in this. And a guy like, so, like, Max Burt, Reggie McClain, Dave McKinnon, guys I work for now, 
I mean, pretty much even Jeffress over the years, like I wasn't Jeremy's first agent and I'm not his last, but, <laughs> um, but usually when guys have a bad experience with an agent, then they meet me, they're like, Oh, okay, this is way better. Yeah. And I get worried when I represent a kid the whole time that doesn't know anything else because then they're like, Oh, I wonder what's out there. And I'm like, <laughs> no, don't wonder that. Yeah. Don't stray. Don't stray. But I, I there's the, another the devil, you know, well, there's another thing that has a hundred percent accuracy. I, uh, if a guy cheats on his girlfriend, a hundred percent of the time, those guys have fired me. Okay. Wow. So if they cheat on their girlfriend, they're going to cheat on their agent. Okay. So who's fired and their you? names? Uh, hey, right. I have a hundred percent termination rate. <laughs> That's not bad. Good luck figuring that That's out. That's the business. Yeah, I don't care. Everyone yeah. lies about that. Like, like you see people getting super sad about getting fired, and it's like, what do we do here? Come on. Well, that's all. That's like the industry. Like, there's no it, f- in baseball. Like the, the bench coaches, they're like, you, you get hired. Managers, you get hired to get fired. I get like, hired to get fired. There's no feelings in this. Like, that's yeah. the thing that I, I, I used to hear, and I, I obviously I have all my opinions. If anybody's ever seen my Twitter or met me, and <laughs> uh, or spoken to me or overheard me in a hallway. <laughs> um, but, uh, the, the elevator people, the elevator know. people, yeah, but I just, there's just so much, uh, so much bullshit in this job. And I just, it would be so much easy. Like when people are like, you see agents crying over things or they love their guys. I promise you the majority of them do not. This is all transactional. It's a business. I care about the guys I work for. Reggie McLean's one of my best friends. I love Reggie. I love that I'm able to do this. I'm close with every single client I have now. I like this better than what I was doing before. But when you see these guys with like 50, 60 clients and they're emotional about all of them, I mean, it's bullshit. I yeah. hate it. And I would love to call it out more. I, I just, I don't, I don't know why anybody, like if I knew what the industry was like before I had gotten into this, I would have followed the other path and gone, um, to do stand up full time. Like I had an opportunity to go to the upright citizens brigade school in New York when I was like that same age, but I wanted to work in baseball my whole life. And then I did. And well, I mean, uh, you do have an 18 year career. Like it is it's yeah. not like, no, no, it's not that. I just don't, I don't care about baseball at all. I love the history <laughs> of baseball, but this is all business. Everything here at the winter meetings is money. None of this matters to anyone here except for the money. Yeah. yeah. You're like Sinclair, the animal. We just, <laughs> That's funny. We <laughs> thank you. We 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 just implemented like Wall Street principles over the years and just implemented it in baseball. And now everything's very cold and methodical. And if teams don't care, why do I need to care? Like I don't have any loyalty to these ball clubs. They don't have any loyalty to me or the players. This is all yeah. transactional. They're gonna use you up until they can't use you anymore, and then they get rid of you like anything else. So like when teams sell that family bullshit, that's like a that's like Coca Cola selling family. The loyalty stuff, like in the non-tender, we just found out. Like, it's I mean, you uh, guys just found that out. I yeah. I knew that it's broken. The arbitration, arbitration. Well, yeah, it's so broken. It's all broken. And there's, uh, you think you guys asked me this off here? Yep. Do I do I personally think this? Do I have any insight? Yeah, I have insight. But this is not coming from that insight. This is my yeah. person. Do I think there will be a labor stuff? Yeah, of course I do. I want to get into that, but we're going to take a quick break first because that's a big, fun conversation. I know it is, and, and, and I'm going to talk more than anyone at the winter meetings about that. This is like a <laughs> fake break. I'm just going to play music, then they're going to hear an ad, and then yeah. we're going to pause two seconds. That's business, man. Money, money, money. It's a nice song, right? <laughs> Mike Rotunno, shout out. And we're back from our break. Woo. That was the best You got break any music taken. stuff? I feel like, I don't know. I'm a huge music guy. You guys should follow me on Instagram. You get on the stage? Oh, not me. No, I'm just a big fan. I'm, a, I'm an old head hip-hop guy. I like grunge. I listen to hip-hop now. I'm a huge hip-hop guy now. I was sad yesterday for real about Juice World dying. R.I.P. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when... when hip-hop it, and grunge? What's, like, modern grunge? There's now? nothing. It's yeah. Dead. It's like, but I'm a Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. Like, those are my favorite bands growing yeah, up. Yeah, but, but, 90s guy. Yeah, huge 90s guy. But, like, old head hip-hop guy. I grew up with Cypress Hill, Dre. 90s guy. Snoop. Hawk, big, yeah, nineties, <laughs> formative years, hundred percent. I don't, but 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 like now, like one of my favorite artists of all time is Childish Gambino. I love Bino. Bino's yeah. like my favorite, one of my favorite ever's of all time. You like him for like just his rap, or do you like just that he that he transcended? No, I like that entertainment. No, yeah. I like that too. I that's so impressive. 
Love that. But I legitimately am a fan of his music and because I, I knew him as a comedian, right? Like yeah, most yeah, people. Yeah. And then I, I started listening to the music. So, like, you know, I, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this. I was married for five years, got divorced. In those five years, I literally did not listen to music, which not a great plan. And <laughs> I got out of the marriage, and I started listening to everything that I missed. And I'm like, oh, my God, I missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who is this Kendrick Lamar character? I'm, I'm picturing you. <laughs> Love a picture of you jamming, jamming in five years of music in like two and a half. I weeks did. I did. Like I 100% did. Just feeling like all I, powerful. I did. It was <laughs> like, like VH1, the catch up <laughs> and like just 48 hours straight of every song. Hang on. Let me see if I have this. You know, you know what I like about Glover is that he has all these different things. This isn't a baseball conversation at all, but no, I hope fine. you guys enjoy it. He has all these things. Like, he, he acts, he writes, he does comedy, he does every, rap. Every, and everything is a different personality. Like, he has all these different versions of himself, which everyone does. And he's able to tap into it in some sort of creative. Like, his stand-up is so silly. Yes. And then sometimes his rap is, like, kind of hard for kind, like a Kind of? Yeah, right? Holy but it, crap. But it's like, whoa, dude, who is this guy? I think that's cool. I, I, think, like, uh, I like that, though. I, I never, I started to hate, like, you know, pivoting back to me. <laughs> hey, that's normally my gig. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like... That's normally my thing. Yeah, but no, that was a great point about someone that wasn't me. Now let's talk about me. <laughs> um, I started to hate myself, like, when people would come up to me and be like, oh, you're the youngest agent, you're the youngest, you're an agent. You're, I don't like being known for being an agent. That's why I, like, completely went the other way the last yeah. few years, and I show up like this, because... Do you find you have different personalities when you're in no. the agent room versus when you're on the oh, yeah, uh, well, stand-up yeah, versus well, doing whatever? Kind of. I mean, those jokes are jokes I would tell here. So, no, my personality is the same. It's just on stage. You're, you. I, I on stage. I, I told you guys. I play a moron. Like I tell horrible jokes, but and they're about rough subjects. But the butt of the jokes, me being a moron. Yeah. It's yeah. not expenses at you. It should be. People still hear it wrong sometimes because these are awful subjects. Yeah. <laughs> but I like. I like. That's a challenge to me. But that kind of comedy that I do is like dying now. <laughs> So like the, the 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 shock comedy. So. Yeah, it's I I feel like I don't know what what were the comedy. There was two stand ups that came out this year. Chappelle. I feel, I feel like Chappelle and Bill Burr tried to do shock and I, ones. I hated them both. Really, I hate and I love Chappelle and Burr, but like Burr's pissing me off because, and he's one of my favorites. I I, I Burr's amazing, and yeah. I loved him in Breaking Bad, and I loved him as a comic for many many years and i i love bill burr put your shoulders up but but don't always make me laugh. but hearing <laughs> bill burr now complain that it's just a joke you shouldn't complain if i offend you just don't laugh and i'll get it is bullshit you know the audience is telling you you can't profit off these jokes anymore and there's so much material out there to write about it's inexcusable to me that people like Chappelle or bill burr are that talented and smart generationally and do lazy, stupid jokes I would hear at an open mic. I don't watch Dave Chappelle to tell jokes about transsexual people, ever. So <laughs> for him to go spend time on that... And, you've never, and, so you've never just went to Netflix, I hope he's talking about the transsexual I hope, people. I hope he's okay. punching down. I, I really hope <laughs> Chappelle is punching down this time. Like he's, he's done so much advocacy for like the unheard voices. I hope finally he just gives it to the... The, the, the disenfranchised people. Chappelle's, Chappelle's was a roller coaster for me because there was a couple that yeah, so, felt like well thought out and it was like, yes, like that Chappelle. Like yeah, you just. The alphabet people joke new, he did was amazing. Yeah. yeah. But then there was, was really a, there was a couple he that were just most, lazy. You know, he stole the premise of that joke. From yeah, that's a, that's a, fair. A comedian named Owen Benjamin told a version of that joke first and he sucks, but <laughs> Chappelle took the premise and made it Chappelle. And that, that was the best joke, I think, of the special. But Burr. I, I, I like my one of my favorite comedians, uh, Jim Jeffries. Jim started complaining about the PC culture, and they would they would they him and Bill Burr, Jim Jim Jeffries and Bill Burr criticized Saturday Night Live for being sensitive over the the hire they had last year. Remember that yeah. the, the guy yeah, yeah, yeah. who told all the, the the slurry comments on a podcast yeah, that yeah. were not jokes. He just yeah. was being a racist. Yeah, yeah, those weren't jokes. No. He was just being a bad guy. Yeah, he was being a racist, literally. Yeah. And you know, he's like, I push the boundaries of comedy. And then you see guys like Jim and Bill Burr defending that right like free speech you know that's the part of comedy i don't like i'll, I'll stop yeah. after this but comedians that feel like they can go on stage and say whatever they want and be in a bubble and not be criticized is insanity to me yeah. so i i don't so anytime i hear a comic complaining about pc culture ruining comedy it bothers me and i know i'm just saying my brand of comedy is kind of dying out i'm not going to change it but i understand why people don't want that anymore is comedy is there comedy in the baseball world? I know there is in the clubhouse. Like we've talked to players, and they don't take, they don't take baseball nearly as seriously as 
the rabid fans no. take baseball. But what about it. here, the front office? Is there any comedy? Is it all just kind of just sucking? Well, you know these people. Funniest so. GM. I mean, I know that, but. Uh, and? Come on. Nick Kroll's awesome. The Reds. Okay. But, um, well, see, that's the thing, though. You asked me, like, is there comedy? So, like, I've been an agent for 18 years. I've known Nick since he was an intern with the Reds. Now he's their GM. So, like. That's cool. That's got to be cool. It is cool. Yeah. Or, or, like, Stearns. I know Stearns. I knew him when he was an intern at Houston. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy to me. Or, or Hyam, Bloom. He was an intern at Baseball Prospectus when I wrote there. <laughs> So, that's nuts. Yeah, that's right? That's cool. <laughs> and and uh, you have stuff like that, you know, you have those long-standing relationships. So it's not it's not like I'm going to see Nick Kroll, the Reds GM. I'm going to see my friend Nick. So yeah, it's it, you know, in all honesty, there's very little time talk talking about baseball here. We get the work done and then we just catch up. Yeah. The baseball sense. web is awesome. Like even even those connections you just said and I mean what Those connections are awesome. <laughs> that, the, the, I was going to feed that, you that a little. Bit. The, the 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 web is what keeps people out of the industry and I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's incest- Jake likes to say uh It's incestuous. Uh, Hollywood's uh, one big orgy. Yeah. Baseball and, is too. And baseball like you wonder me is just like everyone just is like yeah. intertangled in this thing. There are agents that are like talking to each other here and we all literally hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe there hasn't been, like, an incident at, like, the agent meetings. Because we're in a room. We're in one room with every single certified agent. And there's never been, like, a fight. And Boris isn't just, like... You're, you're on record saying Boris is the funniest man in baseball, right? Yeah, I, will. I, I can't <laughs> wait for this week. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, last year he just, like, brought a fucking podium and stood on top of it oh, in front that- of the... I, I know. So where is he going to do it this year? Downstairs in the lobby, right? I was here last time when he did it. It was by like a giant Christmas, Christmas tree in the tree. lobby. Christmas yeah, 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 yeah. So he's probably going to do it again in the oh, lobby. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He'll do it Wednesday. I, I love those. I love it so much. I love it. I, I told you, he has my favorite. I think I said this last year. Yeah, the nurse one, right? No, 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 no. That, you brought that one up. He has the other one when when, uh, when 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 Robbie Cano's deal got done. Somebody here, I think it was here in San Diego. Somebody asked him, what, you know, how do you feel? Like, you lost Robbie and... You know, now he just got $200 million, and how do you feel? And he paused, and he looks at the reporter, and he goes, you know, it's one thing to, like, use him. Like, how do you feel like losing him to Jay-Z? That was the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, how do you feel about losing that big client to Jay-Z? And he goes, well, you know, it's one thing to use an umbrella. It's another thing to have been the guy who invented the umbrella. <laughs> it's just like, damn. I will say this. I'm not supposed to say this on air, and Samantha's not um, here He's to here stop. stop you. Yep. So, Miss you, Samantha. Yeah. I, uh, I had an incident with Rock Nation this year. Which I, uh, <laughs> it's a friend. I know. Like we have a we have a photo bomber on a yeah. podcast. No one can see this. Um, <laughs> no, but I had an incident with Rock Nation this year, and I got a kind of like form letter email from someone there, and I responded to them saying, "This is like the first email I've ever gotten from your baseball agency." And I have to say, I'm as impressed with your baseball agency as I am with your founder's NFL activism. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Got him. Any response to that email? Yeah. <laughs> oh, think come back. here's a fun conversation we can have that we couldn't have last winter meetings. Brody Van Wagenen mm-hmm. was an agent. Yes. Now the GM of the Mets. Yeah. We call him Brody Van GM because I can never remember. I called him something else last year and I got in trouble. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. Thoughts? I think it's a sham. I think it's all. I think it's insane. I can't. Okay, great. Because we're on yeah. the same page there. I think it's absolute insanity. I think it's an institutional failure that. That was allowed to happen. That when he represented guys on the Mets. Yeah. No, I get it. It's horrible. I think it's, it's one of like those last straw things. And for someone in that position to have written that threatening letter saying that don't underestimate the PA, we have a bunch of alpha male personalities. Like, like I read that note. And I'm like, shut up, frat boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> alpha male shit. Like, shut up. Do like, you think that that's a, like an easy crossover? Like from the inside, like is the job of an agent similar to the job of a GM? Like can, uh, can it be done by the person that is smart enough? I don't or? know how the Mets do this year. <laughs> well, a lot of their moves didn't work. There you go. They were around. They had some Which fun. for the Mets ain't bad. Yeah, they, they, I mean the Mets. Do you, know, do you know my theory on this that I'm not supposed to posit on this, but since he's not an agent anymore, I don't care. There's going to be a lot of not supposed to conversations today. Perfect. So um, he... <laughs> Everybody who interviewed for that job, in my opinion, probably had a plan for rebuilding that organization from yeah. the ground up. Mm-hmm. And he was the one guy that went in and said, we don't we can need win. We can yeah. win. We don't need to rebuild. Absolutely. Let's just oh, play. yeah. That's what he did when he went on uh, my Francesca show with oh, WFAN. Did I didn't know that. Francesca oh, was like, God. oh, dude, it's one of the you funnier would, combos. You would love this. Cause I, I wouldn't because I'd have to hear Brody. <laughs> I think I might, I might be able to pull this up. 
uh, <laughs> we can like move on with the combo. No, but I, it's, no, it's it is very it's, funny. It's a comedy show. It's but like not I, intentionally. <laughs> I just I don't. It, it just adds to what I've been saying. This is okay. Here we go. Here we go. I know you usually like to ask the questions. I got one for you. Yeah. Who in the National League East is going to beat us, and why? Right now? Right now. Well, the Braves have a better team right now than you do. I mean, I think absolutely. I mean, as far as their everyday players, I take theirs over yours. So would you. I mean, you know you would. Okay. I, I know you usually like to ask the that, questions. That's, I got that's, one for hold you. On. Yeah. Who in the National League East is going to That's the clip. That's the greatest clip of all time. <laughs> I, it's, I, I mean, I tweeted, I said, this is such a great soundbite. I know Brody has to show confidence, but my God, you can't set up for Seth, Francesa that easily. Do you know what I like? I want to go on somebody's show and ask them that question. I want to start. I know you usually have a job, but I'm going to do it for you because I'm good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could have, could have seen that eye roll on this podcast. Oh, we got a video there. Yeah. But yeah, how yeah, fucking yeah, dumb is that, that from Brody? Who's better than us in the East? Everyone besides the Marlins. And, like, maybe that plays somewhere, but New York? I mean, like you're I'm a get Jew. I know that. New York well. And <laughs> it's that, like, level of cognitive dissonance. Like, really? Are you serious right now? Like, and it was. You, and I, I knew right then, like, because we were trying. Was that the Arrested Development moment for you? Like, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> well, we were trying to say, like, hey, some of these moves from Brody, like, they might need, they might be pretty good. Like, you know, ma- like, like, maybe. We, we were trying to are you, make. Were you trying to be fair and balanced? We, trying. Yeah, we were trying to make sense of it because it's like, okay, maybe he does have great relationships and maybe he'll be a great negotiator because he can think about it from the you agent You could have just side. asked me if an agent would be a good GM and I would have been like, <laughs> uh. Wait, wait, remember the last agent turn GM? How well that went? No, who was that? Dave Stewart. Oh, I don't, I'm not familiar. With the Diamondbacks? Not good. Dude, you don't remember what he did? No, 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 no. He traded Dansby Swanson and like five guys for Shelby Miller. Mm. <laughs> That's just a fun name swap, Dansby for Shelby. Shelby's still figuring it out. I mean, that didn't work out well, trading the number one overall pick like five months after taking him like I, for Shelby Miller. No I, offense, Shelby. I don't know no. if you can speak on this, but with Probably uh, not, but the, I will. the Brewers and Jeffries. <laughs> mm-hmm. What happened at the end of the season there? Because I, I remember he, reading he, your tweets and you were saying, like, that's I, not true. That's not true. Or, or Oh, nothing happened. He just had a rough year. I don't work for him anymore. We had a bad falling out. I hope he does well. Um, oh, really? You were, like, all, like, you were his, like. 14 years. You were his hype man and on Twitter and stuff. I, I did it for most of my adult life, and we had a bad disagreement uh, before the winter meetings over his future, and he's still a free agent now, and I don't work for him. And that, was I, he injured? I mean, he got hurt during the year. He was he missed spring. He got missing hurt. spring seems like it sucks for a lot of these guys. Like it actually does damage it does, their. But then you also you know one has to always look into why someone missed spring. You know. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, we're gonna take another break, and this time we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk non tendering, labor, arbitration, state of baseball, comedy, the stuff I like. I'm gonna start with comedy again. You can. Let's see, this is your playlist. For the winter meetings. Coming in hot, the spins, hustle hard, just motivating yourself, huh? Mike Miller. And then here R. you R. are wearing, wearing a Bob Ross <laughs> shirt, sitting with us, I think C- I, coming in hard. I think I, I, think I, I think I finished this set list with Blowing Money Fast by Rick Ross. Hustle. hustle. <laughs> oh. All right, so last year we, we had you on, as we said, talking baseball. You, uh, you skirted around the word that you wouldn't say, but I would say, which was strike. And everyone was. You, yeah, I don't you were care saying anymore. It, but everyone is saying it's coming. There's going to be a big dispute. After winter meetings last year, mm-hmm. we walked away. Everyone walked away. And then they decided on some new rules. And they said, and we're going to open up negotiations now so we can tr- give ourselves the most amount of time to get on the same page. By the time it comes up in two years or whatever, like whenever it is. I thought maybe that would have helped and changed some things. Now we have, <clears throat> there's so many issues. I mean, the arbitration system's broken. The non-tender system's broken. But the big dogs last year, Machado, Harper, they did get paid. Yes, they did. And we are getting a lot of movement this year and guys getting paid. But, but, but there are a lot of things broken. So where are we? So Better me, or worse? So let me ask you a question. <laughs> 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 I was saving that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you say the big players got paid last year. Why was there no inflation from A-Rod's contract to 2018? Well, I mean, that's a good call. 
Uh, but I mean, I, no, I'm asking. How did A Rod in 2000 whatever get what? What was it? Ten for two fifty, something like that. Yeah, what two fifty two? Was two fifty two? Yeah. So, well, I mean, wasn't, well, well, now it's that AAV. Looked, so, like, what? Like, that's what everyone looks. Wasn't at. that look? No, like, that's what agents sell. That's still stupid. <laughs> I well, mean, I mean, if the luxury cap is going to be a thing, you have to look at that. The luxury cap is going to be what destroys baseball. Like, I mean, wasn't wasn't the A Rod contract? A, and and again, maybe this is wrong, but I feel like it was viewed that like that was too much money. And I know that's that's not how things are supposed to work, but it was like, viewed that way. Yeah, like by t- who t- though? Like by well, who? It, it felt like by the who? Texas Rangers uh-huh. were were crippled by that contract. Why were they crippled? No, let's stay on this. They were a poorly run organization. No, 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 no. How did that cripple them? We're going to totally stay on this. I'm taking over. I mean, <laughs> they, they were saying that... Who's they? Say these words. Don't the you Texas pro- are, No, don't you I don't know. So I, baseball. Pa- baseball in general. What, I, I'm what, not going to say names because I didn't know no, the I don't names mean, I don't the mean. Night. I don't mean names. What side? What are you fans? Talk- you're talking about. We're talking about like fans, right? And or or no no. Or, 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 that's what I'm asking. Or owners. What do you mean? Do you mean fans? I'm saying all of it. I, I think no, separate that. Besides that- besides agents, everyone outside of agents said and that the A Rod contract was okay. So like separate the everyone. You say fans and ownership. What the fuck do I care about ownership and fans' input on a contract? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, but 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 say stay on that because that's part of the problem when you guys say too much. This is what owners have conditioned fans to say. You are saying to me literally that was too much of the owner's money. Yeah. Why do you as fans even remotely give – not you guys specifically. Yeah. No, no. But well, why I mean, do fans give a shit about what owners – But this, this happens just in America. But that's because of owners. And Well, it's because of the rich people. Yes. It's like the same problem with the TV show Friends when they were like, we need a million dollars per episode. And the public was like, what the fuck? You guys are blah, blah, blah. And Chandler or uh, yeah. uh, Matthew Perry went on TV and he was like – we just want a percentage of what everyone else. If we don't get the million, someone's getting the million. Well, that's the point. And, but but yeah, the, as society, we're conditioned, and, and because what, the, we're conditioned right. by the people with all the money. But and it's, they're ridic- telling, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's insanity. Every single team could afford every single player without losing anything. But the luxury cap does change that. No, it doesn't. In what you, it only it changes it in the sense that it acts as a superficial salary cap. That's the only. If you were an owner, if you owned a baseball team Absolute. and you had those in place, you would. You would duck under that cap every three years or whatever the rules are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's your point? So that's hard to give away, give out bigger contracts when you have to balance it every three years, right? That's a choice from ownership, and fan, that's not going to change until fans get pissed off. Uh, and, the, and you blame the players for this. Not you. I'm but so, you, so, so what do, you, do you think there should be a minimum then? Do I think there is a minimum? No, no, for like for oh, teams. Oh, teams. Like, should there oh. be a. No, because if we am- enter that Pandora's box, they're going to ask for a cap. If we say we want a floor, the inverse is that we want a cap. And is there a situation where that would be more beneficial to players now versus what the system is currently? Probably. But do you know why that is? Because owners are not participating in good faith in what the actual system is supposed to be, which is a free market, which it is not. Well, the, yeah. So the biggest problem with the system, um, besides like owners not wanting to spend and fans being conditioned by the owners, that's a whole bigger thing. But yeah. the actual, the actual uh, bargaining agreement that is in place right now, mm-hmm. it favors kids that make the big leagues at 19 to 22 and hit free agency mm-hmm. at 26 to 29. Yes. And if you break in... Uh, Reggie, Mc, Reggie McClain, my client, 26-year-old rookie. Yeah, he's fucked. Luke Voigt for the Yankees, uh, 28-year-old rookie. Yep. Fucked. Will yep. never get paid. Doesn't, doesn't hit free agency until he's, what, 34? Yeah, yeah. and then he's never going to get paid. So, and, and I think the goal was to protect young kids? Like, if you make it to the big leagues, you're going to have the security of no, no, seven no. years. No, 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 no. The, the reason... I, I, There's Tori. You want to ask him for your autograph? I would, but we're working. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that sucks. <laughs> um, so... He'll, he'll like this conversation. This would be hilarious. Oh, my God. I would tell him. I don't give a shit. He'll... <laughs> I was going to say something so yeah. bad right now. <laughs> we'll reel that in a little bit. Yeah, I don't care. What's he going to do? Write me a letter? Um, and I'd respond, can you sign this card? <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Tory. Here you go. I wouldn't say sorry. Um, <laughs> um, no. Um, go back to your point. I got distracted by Joe Tory. My, my point is, why, do, why was the system in place? Okay, yeah, yeah. So the system's in place. The system was in place always to protect the veteran players. As long as the veteran players' salaries were preserved... Um, the PA didn't care about selling out the younger guys. So you have a situation where um, draft picks, minor leaguers, 
um, pre-arb guys all get eaten up by the system, and very few guys make money, and, and that's, that's capital. So this, I, I'm horrified to ask this question. Mm-hmm. Commissioner for a day. Mm-hmm. You get to rewrite the rules. I mean, is it... Is it just so much less team control? Like, what? what is the solution? Oh, how would I fix oh, Yeah. Get it, guys to free agency sooner and eliminate arbitration. or but make, like what's, Eliminate the arbitration system as it is and change it to something better over less years. Just cut it down. Like yeah. Cut it in half. Yeah, but, but, but what incentive does ownership have to do that? None. None. Did you see what, what – this is public, so I'm not breaking anything here, but did you see what Manfred said to the PA? No. It was in Calcaterra's article a few weeks ago. I saw it online. Craig wrote that – um, there was a meeting with the PA and, and, uh, and, and uh, the MLB, and Manfred said, or, or I'm sorry, the PA said, you know, we're not going to give up stuff. This, we need to make gains. We need to make gains in the next CBA. And MLB's office goes, uh, or Manfred goes, well, we're not, you know, what do we get? And PA's answer is, we give you labor peace, so there's going to be no work salvage. Right. And then Manfred's answer to that was, we're not giving you anything for labor peace. <laughs> So that's cool. That's how we Tough start. Tough negotiation. That's not much of a negotiation. Or like the other, the other thing that everyone's, you know, it's like, you know, the owners are totally open to changing the system as long as it doesn't change the finances. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, thanks. For anyone that's watching or listening that is completely unaware of what we're talking about, the system that's currently in place is once a player breaks into the MLB, um, you're not supposed to say the MLB, and people always correct me. MLB. One, uh, yeah, because it's not the Major League Baseball. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. To those people on YouTube, would love to leave that comment. Once you break into MLB, you basically have three. Correct me, it's three years of team control where you're just gonna make the minimum, which is around five hundred. Five thirty-five. Yeah. Five thirty. Five hundred thirty-five grand, and then you have four years of arbitration, or is it three again? Three. Three, three years of arbitration, which basically the system kind of just takes you <laughs> what you've done your age whatever it takes into account your your baseball card stats that are super irrelevant now because yeah. you're not allowed yeah. to use analytics you're not allowed to use most data like analytics in yeah. in, in a arbitration so you can't use spin rate can't yeah use- so there's arbitration if you agree on this number and then that's year by year. Every year you have to go, and if you guys disagree, you have to go to arbitration. You have to. Well, like the way the hearings work is, you know, you you pick a number as the player and the agent and the PA, and then the team picks a number, and then you have your case, and then the arbitrator picks one of the two numbers. He can't pick in between. Nope. Yeah. And you got to settle for that to happen. But there used to be a negotiating period before arbitration where you could negotiate. You could negotiate with the ball club right up until the hearing started. Like, like you could be there in a suit, getting ready for it, and then see them in the the room and get it done. That's happened. And um, now teams are all something called file and trial, where once you decide to go to arbitration, they won't talk to you anymore. And then, and then you get shit talked by your own club. Yes, and oh, they yeah. tell a judge how bad you are like in Derek, front in front of you. That's Derek such Jeter, baseball. Derek Jeter that's had to so do it, baseball. and uh, and and he said like you know it sucked. And Dallin Batances were a Yankee background. And then then recently, what the Yankees just did last off season is they bought out, and a lot of people are doing. The Braves are doing this. A lot of guys are doing this. They're buying out. Yeah, the that's arbitration. A, that's, a, that's a thing. Uh, at a low AAV, which is average annual value. It's not just a low AAV. That's a low. Total. Yeah. 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 So they're buying it out. I, uh, as a as a dumb fan or whatever, I'm like, good, don't go to arbitration because then, like... You like, don't want our pitchers getting yelled at. I don't want Severino <laughs> to go find... I think some players are fragile, and when they go to that meeting... Some. I think, yeah, I think Most. a lot I think a, a lot of humans are fragile. A, How about that? A, a, I wouldn't want to go to a room... AJ Burnett, my, AJ Burnett cried after his hearing. Did you hear this? And then vowed never to play for the Marlins again. Yeah, well, Adelon Batances was like, fuck that, because everyone was mean to him. But what, who, and no one would want to have to go to court right. in fa- against your boss, and your boss oh is telling God. you how much you suck. In fairness, teams don't want to do that, but that's how the system is. I think, right. Well, I think that's why they're trying to, like, let's just buy out arbitration. So yeah, but they're not. They're, yeah, but that's still so. Every single one of those is club friendly. But, I mean, yeah. there is, uh, like, an injury. There is a, a fail-safe. Because, like... Um, that's, that's, the, that's the excuse every time, isn't it? But, uh, but I'm saying, in this current system, which we agree sucks and is bad... No, the system's fine. It's just broken. They're not uh, participating in it. If they did it in good faith, we wouldn't have these issues. But wouldn't, wouldn't like, Severino, what do you get, 70? For, I, don't, I don't remember what he got. Whatever. He's not my guy. I can't comment. You say, so, like, he's got... Four years left. He's going to make five thirty-five, five thirty-five. Then probably like uh, whatever it is, it's like twelve, eleven, twelve, 10 or yeah, 10, 11, yeah. 
13, 17. It's like kind of what Kluge's yeah, path what, whatever, was. Something yeah, like that. I saw it, yeah. So if the total over those years is higher than what that would be, isn't it smart to just sign that? And then you're still a free agent when you're a free agent. You don't have to argue after every season. No, if you get that, that's injured. That's everybody's individual choice. I mean, some guys like it, some guys don't. I, I don't ever – I don't know what everybody's situation is in their lives. So well, I, as an agent, you probably want to <clears throat> bet on the player. Always. But, like, there is injury risk. So, like, I understand buying out arbitration. I do think that they need to just – It doesn't feel like those deals that last year, in my opinion, all of them in the totality, not one specific deal, it feels like all of those were a reaction to what happened last offseason. I think so yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. absolutely. oh, absolutely. So that's, that's not good. No. No, but because the owners created this marketplace where no one was getting an offer, and then they benefit from it from like, did you see what happened? Here, why don't you just take this? And, and it's like, oh, my the, God, the they're I was fucking a, puppeteers. Yeah. The it, ones that were ridiculous were, I, I think, the Braves guys, Albies and Acuna, were like, they're the guys that we talked about who, they're what you said, the perfect storm. They got called up young, and then they're stars. Those are guys that, if they hit it right, I mean, they could have been star free agents at age 27, and they took these – Kind of odd team-friendly deals. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Josh's face was very exciting during I, that. I, I can't. I just I can't talk about players I don't work for specifically or I'll get not being I'll, I'll get kicked out of being an agent. But I I just everything's broken. And then we got two years to figure it out. And it it is better that they they agreed like we need to figure this out. I mean it's well, couldn't could could be worse. They didn't agree to that. There's I thought that was I thought that's what came, came, that's happened. Not, it's so superficial. Okay. Like, if you're in ownership's position, what incentive do you have to open up these negotiations legitimately in good faith? And in my opinion, there's there's none. And I think it's all just window dressing. So is that scared way, of a strike? I, yeah. I'm not scared of it. It's going to happen. I started, no, no, no. The owners, they're only. No, no they're not. They're they're not. They're, but they should be. That could no, be the only thing that they're like. They're, okay, we need to do this. They're not. As long as these owners don't lose money, they don't care what happens. In my opinion. Okay. Is, it doesn't need to make. Tell well, me. Okay, so this is important. So, what is the difference now between 1994? And that labor stoppage and what's going on now is that the composite of the ownership uh, membership, that club of 30 owners, the makeup of it is very different. In the 90s, you had Bud Selig and Mark Schott and, and Carl Lindner and, and all these small, but, but you know, Selig, who, who was a car dealer. And you had all these, these, these less rich people owning these ball clubs who were financially dependent on, on their club. And now you have billionaires who own teams and literally don't care at all as long as they don't lose money. Yeah, don't tell Mets fans this because they're about to get the richest owner, yeah. Steve Cohen, and they think he's going to pour money and really care. But now you're no saying... No one cares about anything. It's just all... It's a <laughs> business. They, you know, it's, it's a business. And every, the lowest valued franchise in Major League Baseball is the Marlins at a billion dollars. And then I hear from fans who are all financial experts on Twitter, which is super oh, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, uh... The, the you know the Marlins just because their franchise valued at a billion dollars doesn't mean they have a billion dollars. Like wow, thanks for tweeting that. <laughs> <laughs> really eye opening stuff. I was like, did you mean to send this to so, me? So I I've got a question, and I I think the <laughs> you accidentally just sent some <laughs> stoop. <laughs> this, this, it might be the window dressing and stuff you're referencing before. Well, but what's changed? How long have they been talking? Well, that's in, what we don't know. In '94, there was also better music that we've already agreed on, there, so we there was we can music. agree to that, but. Um, last year at winter meetings, and there was, like, no action. But, there won't but, be here either. But the, the whole buzz was, well, already this free agency, there's been more yes. than at this point last yes, year. Yes, I which, agree. Again, and Moose is, got paid, and he hasn't been paid in two years. do you know, do you know why? Because everyone saw last year that waiting didn't do scared. shit. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but, the, but the numbers aren't that bad either. Like, Moose got paid pretty no well. Opinion. No opinion. <laughs> no opinion. You're, you're asking no. the Moose wrong guy. Moose got paid pretty good. Wheeler got paid pretty good. No, no, no opinion. comment. No opinion on players um, that I don't work for. If... So last year it was the hot like everyone we talked to, and this isn't a side of you. No, but no, I got everyone it. we talked to was like, "Yo, like this labor shit is real. Like yeah. shit's gonna go down." Now it has gotten quiet. I know Jimmy mentioned that like the two sides agreed to open up and talk, and that's I, not new. I I don't I don't want I don't want. Well, I do obviously want you to overstep your boundaries. I'm but going to. You're you are the only person in our circle. Forty hours of being here. Mm -hmm. That With this perspective. Heard, that have heard. Oh, they're all lying to you. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's the window. There's dressing. no way you spoke to Calcaterra and he told you everything was fine. Uh, we had him on our history podcast. Yeah. There's no way Craig didn't tell you exactly what I'm saying. 
Craig he, and I, he, we'll have him on later. But, I was gonna say, but Craig he wrote and I, an article. I feel like, okay, so that's the difference. Like, people would open with that last year. Like, people would look around, give like, man, things because are... Because they can only see what's right in front of them. And I'm not saying, like, I'm this sage, but, you know, they... they <laughs> I would like if you called yourself a sage. I, I have. I've called myself <laughs> lots of things. They haven't stuck. You can't give yourself a nickname. Jake tried it with Rocky, but actually what stuck was the toilet Nostradamus. That's funny. Bad. Yeah, mine's stupid. My players just started calling me Jake Cuz. Oh, that Jake works. I know. A Rod, it's so, it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. Um, <laughs> what would mine be? Yours would be J Store. Your job, Jimmy O'Brien. Well, be J O B. No, that's a good one. That's a that's a good one. J Store's not bad. It sounds like uh, some shitty Mine fam- story family. Area. Mine sounds yeah. awesome because there's a Z in it. Because but, it's a good it's a good letter. But um, <laughs> they, uh, I anyone call you Cuzzo? Nah, like Lizzo. <laughs> 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 they, yes. I, they have actually. Um, no, I just, uh, yeah, I, I have nothing more in depth than that. They're all lying to you. Everyone's mm-hmm. lying. Everyone's, so we should be worried as baseball fans. Yeah, every single person should be worried. Okay. Like, I mean, not even a little. What can fans do? They just nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I lived. I lived through the '94 man. I was 12. It sucked. We lost baseball, and I went to spring training games to get autographs of replacement players. It was terrible. Well, at least we have a scandal to help us out right now. No comments. <laughs> hey, man, the steroids got us at, through the last strike, and now yeah. every team will just be legally allowed to cheat, and that will uh, get us through this this next labor stoppage. There's always going to be, as long as there's rules, people always try to circumvent them. By no comment, you mean that, yes, the Astros were doing a lot of shady <laughs> shit, and, yes, some other teams are doing similar shady shit, but no one's Well, Rob doing Manfred it. said they're only investigating the Astros. That's reassuring. I, I've talked to a lot of people inside this, and a lot of people on Twitter and YouTube don't think I have. They think I'm just some fucking, like, loser. Do they, like, th- do they think that? Yes. Wow, this took a turn. I agree. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they think I'm just I've like been, a, a I've kid. I've been spreading that rumor. They think I'm just like a guy. Like, I mean, this guessing. conversation just took a turn. <laughs> like, no, people what, hate me. Like, that, do you want my, do no, you want my, tr- no, do you want my that, trench coat? No, because I don't break news, but, like, and they're like, you don't have sources. Like, I don't have sources, but, like, a lot of people are using me since I'm kind of uh, out there. At the oh, no, this. everybody knows what you did. And, and they're, they're DMing and emailing me more info that I'm not sharing, but, like, my perception. I mean, I work for players on those yeah. games, so. Well, yeah. what, what, I, what I'm not scared to say, but I can't back it up with sources, so believe me or not, is that the Astros were doing this more egregiously than any other team. I have no idea. Yeah. So. That's why well, I don't, I, I mean, I don't I, even know if they're doing anything. I have no idea. You know they're doing something, but you just can't say anything. I don't. I don't. I, I. I'm not part of that investigation. I don't know anything about that. All right. If I'll ask you this then, hypothetically, <laughs> if the Astros and the band aids were rumored are true and the earpieces are, I don't true, know those things well, about what. Yeah. Well, just if. If they're all true and it's like went if, to that length. If a team did that? Yeah, if a team from Houston did that. No, no, if a team did that. If, okay, if a team, team did that and it, and it was systematic, it was, execu- it was executives to scouts. They should, they should all get kicked out of baseball. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. If, if a team did all that stuff and got proven, I mean, why not? Yeah, it, it needs to be something crazy, right? I don't think it's going to happen, though. Because Me neither. You, how do you only investigate? Like, don't you want to check everybody like, to see what's up? They need. I'm sure they are, but I'm sorry. Is the standard probable cause at this point? Like, is this a police show? Like, we law and order MLB. I think. I think. <laughs> I think. I think. I think they're only. I'm gonna sorry. S- time out. Why was that guy standing there? He was taking a picture of us. I know. Did you notice that? That's a fan, yeah, he was, man. started smiling at me. I felt like he was just taking it all in. He was like, "There's the J Cuz." Yeah, they were like, "Who is that?" Was, that guy's got a dope shirt. Yeah, who, that guy looks homeless. He's still board here. Who would Who would play you in uh, Law and Order MLB? Oh, God. <laughs> you know what's funny? The hotel I was staying at, do you know who's staying there? Jeremy Piven. Really? Yeah. Ari Gold. Yeah. yeah. Is he going to come be an agent here? It would be so funny if he just showed up here by accident. Oh, See our height? Oh, yeah. He's tiny. Yeah, he's a stand-up yeah. comic. I've seen him before a bunch of times. He's staying literally. There's a comedy club connected to my hotel of all ironies. But, yeah, Piven <laughs> was here. But I, It's so funny. So like, your Piven's playing you? I don't know, but like I always liked. I mean, I I, I loved Entourage, and yeah. I had such a broy show. But like I, and I'm a leftist, but like I, I liked Entourage. No, the first couple seasons were awesome. I then lo- they like turned it into a yeah, soap opera. I know. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And this I, is a fun show about friends having fun. And I still liked it though. Oh yeah. Like people hate. Oh, pe- yeah. People hate the Entourage movie. I do not. I don't like it. Oh, wow. I'll, never, for, I'll never watch it again. I I watched it when it came out. Forget what. Yeah, I'll never. Happened, I'll yeah. never watch it again. But like, I'll never. <laughs> Did you ever see this? Hold on. My 19-year-old self, when someone told me, Vince is the star on the show. Eric is the star 
of the show. And I was like, whoa, oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> it's funny that. I was like, because like Vince has no lines because he was a terrible actor. So in the Adrian season Grenier. one, Adrian Grenier has no lines in season one. He's a star Not, of the show, yeah. but like he didn't talk all. He'd just be like, yeah. So so <laughs> so I opened for Greg Giraldo, stand up comic years yeah. ago. Do you know? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The roast comic. It was yeah. when he passed away, unfortunately. When I opened for him, I wore my Entourage shirt on stage. There it is. Suits suck. Do you remember that from the Medellin? Yeah. Yeah. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I got that shirt made, and I started wearing it on stage. And, and, he, and he wore the famous super high-speed tires and tube shirt. He did. <laughs> I mean, this... I, I this, loved Greg. This is, I mean, now becoming... Some people are like, oh, three, three guys in their 30s talking about Entourage. I'm, I'm shocked. And um, three white guys on a podcast. Yeah. Um, but uh, oh, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of if something goes too far... I like to bring it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, like, Entourage went from, I mean, it was a cool show, and then it went to, like, this bro -y hated world where it's like, I get it. Yeah. But also, like, you could say it was a good show. Like, I, li I liked it. I, I shouldn't feel like it's an not, asshole for saying a not, popular HBO show was but pretty good. Just, I do need to make this point as a segue. You should feel like an asshole if anybody here likes Barstool. Mm. Okay. You, right. sh you should all hate mm. yourselves for that. You should hate ourselves. I, you know, his favorite show was Hung. Oh my God! Really, with Thomas Jane? <laughs> yeah. What a random, ridiculous. what a random favorite show. It's like me telling you my favorite show was Oz. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Hung was about the man with the biggest penis in the world. You're explaining this to people. Well, because uh, it was based Hung. off of a guy named Jonah Falcon, right? Who had a show on the fan called Talking Yanks. Do you know that? Oh, no. I did not know that. Hilariously, I also watched Hung. Dude, Hung. That's well, like that's well, almost like a John from Cincinnati. Uh, we reference. were we I'm were weird. Uh, <laughs> Boom. Well, that was uh, that was um, Deadwood. Yeah. Um, I can't think of his fucking name. Oh, my God. I'm kind of. I loved it. Did you watch the Deadwood movie? I liked it, but I, it, was, it was fan service. It was but fan I liked service. it. I liked it. I but liked I, it. I loved Deadwood. I'm kind of a train accident guy. And like, you like and, tra and, there's a train and, track right behind that's, here. That's what hung was for me. Like, hung, because was it after Entourage? Yeah. yeah we, we would all hang out together. John in from college, Cincinnati so. was the first show after Entourage. Remember, Entourage came off the air and then they aired John from Cincinnati yeah. right after? People were like, what the fuck is this? So existential. It's so weird. What's that writer's name? It's pissing me off. When I can't think of things. It's not David Chase. David Chase did The Wire. Any Chase no. and the Chasers. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, no, what? Milch. David, David Milch. Milch. Yeah. yeah. Deadwood. Deadwood's great. My favorite show now is Mr. Robot, though. Are you waving at Joe what Torre? A... No, no. <laughs> that's Joe Torre's son. <laughs> Joseph Torre. I was going to oh. say, is it Joe Torre, the stand-up comedian? That's my, new, that's my new friend who's yeah. in the Yankees analytics department. Uh, and Yankees I, analytics department? People yeah. are allowed to have friends? <laughs> yeah. Not well, really, that actually. Was fucking the weirdest... Weirdest thing ever. Yeah. What was? When Dude, we met them. We, we, we Did you meet them last night? We walked, yeah, we walked, we walked was that the, Were those the people you were talking to last night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those were really the Yankee guys? Yeah, we, yeah, we were sitting at a table. We yeah, walked, I was with you guys. We, we, walked, I left. we walked up to the... Well, that's why... Yeah, dude, we were, we were kind of being sketchy because they were being sketchy. We walk up to the table and they're like... They like... Almost in a culty way, they like oh. they like nodded their head. Yeah, they were younger. Those yeah, yeah. guys. They, yeah. That's funny. Those guys are still going through the phase that they think this matters and that <laughs> yeah. they're important. They they <laughs> nodded their head and they were like, "Grab a beer." Do you know what? I, like, do you know what I would love? I would you love about to, to kill I, us. I, I, they didn't say they introduced their names. I was like, "Hi, I'm Jimmy," and they're like, "Hey." I mean, you can tell me your fucking name. Like, I'll I don't know who you are. I will tell you a funny. They were nice guys in the end. I will tell you a random funny story I had here yesterday after I saw you guys. I'm leaving, and I go to Seven Eleven. There's a guy getting off his shift from work who's like 60 years old, like grizzled. I thought he was homeless. Like, I'm not judging, but like he looked rough. He worked at a, it's, it's California. He worked, a at a, he worked at a parking. He was a parking lot attendant, this guy. And uh, holds the door open for me when I'm getting my Gatorade. You know, I've, I drink Gatorade only, apparently. I've told you that like several times. <laughs> yeah. I'm in your fourth bottle today. I should wear a shirt and get sponsored by them. Gatorade guy. Yeah. Just make that your new Twitter handle. Gatorade, Gatorade guy. Yo, that generic, the old like. Gatorade yeah, logo I know. Yeah. with the Bob Ross oh, Roosevelt shirt. Yeah. Dude, as long as it was that citrus be, cooler. They just walk around just so naturally. They the called it Guy to Rye. Back in all day, they called Guy Rye. So, <laughs> so this guy holds the door open for me, and then he asks where I'm from. And I said, I'm here for work. I'm going to be here like a week. And, you know, we were checking out. And uh, he's like, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Florida. He's like, oh, I spent some time in Florida. I'm like, oh, cool, whatever. I don't care. Can I pay for this and leave? And, <laughs> and uh I'm like you're not a person who's me. I don't need to Every, hear this. Everyone's so. everyone's real genuine thoughts. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I say them. Yeah. So uh, and then he goes, I spent some time in Key West. I'm like, oh cool. I've been, he's like, have you ever been there? And I'm like, yeah. And that was it. That was the whole conversation. And we're leaving. <laughs> yep. And then we're leaving, and he goes, Key West is great if you're open to new experiences, <laughs> and if you know what I mean. And I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm here an hour in San Diego, and a, a I might gay homeless guy tried to pick me up. Yeah, I might start ending conversations with that just to throw people off a little bit. I think he was wait. just talking about hunting. 
I've been to Key West. He was not talking. I mean, he was talking about a different kind of hunting. <laughs> so he was talking. Male hunters still hang out down there. I, uh, I, I do look like a porn producer know, wearing this. <laughs> it's, it's a good look. We um, an, a somewhat scary question for you. Oh. We're 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 winding there's no, down. There's no fear. Don't wind down. I have nothing. To okay, do. that's fine. <laughs> um, no, I was gonna say like what. And, and I kind of started here, and we we never fully dove yeah. into it. But like, you are a man of many interests. Can we talk like your game? We can't. But what your game? Oh, stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to work. Like, I'm going to work in esports. Um, eventually, I'm going to be out of baseball. I think in, in you know I'm not signing new clients. I'm only working for the guys that I have. If I get a referral that makes sense and I can help somebody, I totally will do it. But I'm not signing high school kids, college kids, uh, most minor leaguers. I just yeah, I like the guys that I have, and I'll ride with them, and we'll see what happens. You know, but we're in for Max Burt. Hell yeah, Max is great. He actually can catch too, by the way. The Yankees almost converted him. Seriously, they got a new catching coach, so maybe he'll uh, hang out with him. Well, you know, um, shortstop uh, uh, guys that play shortstop have really excellent footwork. And <laughs> those are uh, Sespa's family barbecue. You know oh, like those guys? You'd like them. Hi, they you guys know me. They creep me out, but you'd like them. They didn't. They didn't hire me. Jake is saying, You're "I'm going to see, see the Swahe dude." Oh, he's an Escojito, leading the league in everything. Oh, good talk. Did yeah. I see you kiss my dad at the bar last night? Wait, what? <laughs> yep. It's <laughs> a hard yes. Those guys are great. I, did yeah. you ever hear my podcast with those guys? No. no. It, it was like the least popular one they ever did. It was like episode <laughs> 43.5. They didn't even give me a full one. <laughs> Dude, we, we weren't even, we, we weren't fluffing your balls, which, we, again, after the podcast, but... Um, dude, there, when, it's been happening when, the whole time. When, There's a camera. When we did Talking Yanks, we, we were a little nervous just because we, agent, stand-up comedy, we didn't really know what we were going to get into. Most you, people. You were, like, one of our most popular podcasts. Like, <laughs> yeah. people loved it. I should be. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like. Deservedly so. I feel like I've earned that. I, I really feel like, I think, I think that's the recognition I needed <laughs> and deserved. Cole I, going to the Yankees? I mean, he got drafted by them, right? Yeah, he said yeah. no. I know that was baller as hell. <laughs> and then they they tried to trade for him. I just absolutely love that this kid out of high school. I remember when that happened. He's like he's like you know it's my dream to be a Yankee. And they offer him like all this money, and he's Can like, Can you imagine? No, I cannot imagine being the thirtieth pick in the draft and then going back to school and be like, you know what? I'm gonna do twenty nine spots better next time. Yeah. Because I always tell kids when they go to school, like out of the draft when I used to, I'd be like, all right, you're a third rounder. So for you to do better than this, you would have to go to college and go in one of the two rounds ahead of you, or you could go thirty seven rounds behind you. So like, yeah. take the money. And when you have a situation like... Dude, I don't get like... Well, some guys actually... You can't age out of college, but you can age out of being a professional. So, like, if you are drafted in the third round... Yep. Or, like, fucking when Luck went back to to finish school, you know? Stanford, yeah. Stanford. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, dude, and it worked out for him fine or or however you want to think about it, but... You don't age out of college. You can just fucking finish that year when yeah. you're 40 and can't play anymore. And Major I don't understand why why society thinks like you got to go to school and finish. You can do that at any age. Yeah, and and Major League Baseball when you get drafted depending on what's negotiated, they pay for your college. Yeah. So like a high school kid can sign for 10 grand and get his college paid for really? and go whenever he wants. Every single player it's called, it's called the college scholarship program and MLB pays it out so like if a guy gets a signing bonus for like a half a million dollars he'll also get on top of that like a hundred thousand for college yeah but he doesn't get that money it's a program that mlb has yeah, yeah, yeah and they have the money held and then the guy can go to school but the kind of bullshit thing about it is if a guy wants to take classes while he's playing minor league baseball once he starts taking classes he can't stop oh uh, <clears throat> like sporadically if like if he has to go to extended uh-huh. spring training he can't just like miss class like if he says i'm going to take the semester off and then do it next semester they pull all the money um i agree with that it's like ridiculous. if you're if you're a baseball player, be a baseball player. Yeah, I go to college. I at the I agree with that too, but I'm just saying it, they make the program very. It's not easy, easy, right? right. But, but it is it's still a good program. Yeah, and it's cool that the players get taxed on it now, even if they don't use it. <laughs> Good luck applying for that <laughs> refund. <laughs> well, that's fucked. So, anything you want to ask me that's controversial before we end this? I was I was literally going to say, <laughs> let's talk about September 11th. What's, what's, <laughs> terrible day. Terrible. Oh yeah, I'm not joking about that. No. Seriously, uh, Pearl Harbor Day. No. <laughs> You just did. Happened. You made a joke. That's on you. It just happened. Um, it was two days ago. Oh, that was. That wasn't a joke. Yeah, that's just recent. me not knowing history. Yeah. Celebrating. And we're my, by the my, Navy. My ex-mother-in-law's birthday. I was, I was going to say, what, what is the story when you're disconnected from being an MLB agent? Oh, God. That you're going to be the most excited to tell and just tell it now and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> So you just, you can't tell it right now, but you could tell it now and yeah. we'll be like, oh, this happened in the future. Hold on. We'll just, God, oh, it's, 
we'll just whisper. If you need to whisper, like we'll that's just whisper, fine. We'll just whisper it. <laughs> <laughs> the oh wheels are spinning hard. Oh shit. Um, who's like, a who's a bad guy? Like in Ooh. general, yeah, um, who's, who's a guy we no one should root for? Oh, you mean like in baseball? I'm thinking outside baseball right now. I'm thinking <laughs> of like people I know that I hate. We can throw those under the bus too. I was like, oh, I hate this guy. Um, I'm trying to think of people I've gotten into fights with. Okay. Uh, um. Oh. Oh yeah. We can totally talk about this. This. Oh yes. Let's do this. I hate David Sampson. Who's that? Okay. The former Marlins owner. Okay. Okay. Son yeah. or stepson. He's on Levitard show all the time. Oh, okay. He thinks he's important, whereas I know I'm not important. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he uh, he has a platform because his stepdad was rich. And uh, you subscribe to the nothing matters, which I mean, everyone needs to. Uh, I'm, eventually. A ni- I'm a nihilist. I don't think anything matters at all. Like there's no consequences. Do this. Bones. There's no consequences for anything anymore. I could literally do anything here or say anything. Mostly. Oh, wait, I'm take that back. I'm not a nihilist. Oh, no. Because nihilist is like there's a little bit of anarchy that it's attached to nihilism, <laughs> yeah. which well, I'm not into. And now if we really want to dive into it late, I'm an anti-capitalist, yet I benefit from capitalism more than anyone at this table. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, I'm a... Well, cap- we're, 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 we're a, a self-made new. business, so like we're... I'm not against that kind of capitalism. I'm in, I, you know, like I'm pro-labor across the board, and I... So like, <laughs> trying to think of terrible stories. So Samson, um, I showed you this guy's yesterday. He, uh, Justin Verlander, tweeted something smart. Very, very, not, not surprisingly, he tweeted something very, very smart about the finances in baseball. Um, and he wrote that, uh, you know, the system's broken, blah, 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 whatever. The tweet's still online. And then Samson came out, subtweeted Verlander, and said, um, you know, there is a problem with finances in baseball, but it's not going to be solved by players systemically tweeting and complaining about mm. it. Yeah, it is. And I subtweeted Samson. I didn't know what to say, and I just wrote, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and it ended up on the front page of the New York Post. And I, I rally against Samson. And then speaking of other people that you shouldn't root for, I, I have a thing with Brody. You know that. Brody. Yeah. Fuck him. Ben GM. Yeah. What's your thing? Is it before yeah, he became an agent? I have no qualms with him as a GM, technically, because I don't care. It has yeah. no bearing on my life <laughs> beyond my players. Yeah. Uh, and if my players are good, they're going to take them anyway. And if they don't, I don't care, because if they're good, somebody else will take them. So um, when he was an agent, his company went after my guys all the time. Mm. And I imagine I am not the only agent that went through that experience. So to have that guy negotiating with other agents, to me, is so, so strange. The whole well, thing doesn't make sense. That it makes seems it like even it, more <laughs> Mets. That, that, it it got, like, that an agent that's who, who's not beloved in the agent Well, community. no agent's beloved. None of us are beloved. It, need, right. it seems like there needs to be a buffer period. Like, okay, you're an agent, take a couple years off, go to the front office, then you become a GM. But just flipping that switch to being DeGrom's agent I will say this, to his GM is weird. Yes, but Rick Hahn made a transition successfully with the White Sox from being agent to GM. But, again, he didn't have clients. He got rid of it. Right. It, not the same situation. Stewart and Brody left agencies to go work for ball clubs. And it's funny that Han was a, was an agent and like, he missed, yeah, he missed out on Machado because he didn't give him guaranteed money. Seems That's like he not... should have known that. No, nope. <laughs> I can't talk about <laughs> agent. Con- agent wheels are spinning. I. How do you blame a GM for something like that when that's not his money? Well, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know who did it, but what well, no, no, no. Just say in the general, in general, do not. No, you can't go specific on this with me. <laughs> I'm asking, why would someone blame the general manager? You think it's it's not his money? Why does he care? Well, isn't his job to massage the money in the way? Because that was like the money was going to if the child. If office. a player, if a player gets two hundred eighty million dollars or three hundred million dollars, do you think the GM cares? No, but it's all about like it was guaranteed money with Machado. I'm not. I'm not talking about him. About right. general. Any player. Any player. No, I think the GM just wants to land the guys that are going to help the team win. because That helps them. Correct. Yeah. Right. And he has to work within the constraints of the budget that yeah. ownership gives him. The yeah. So whose fault yeah. is it that nobody got extra money? It's always every single time it is ownership. Owner. Every <laughs> single time someone does not get paid, there's only one person responsible for the person to get paid, and is the person handing out the money. And this is the best. So, advice. so what? So would you say GM should actually be? Be, what should they be judged on? Trades? Yeah. Prospects? Yeah, signing players, trades. But free agents, that's kind of out of GM's hands? Well, I mean, to, well, a, de- to a degree. There's good signings. Yeah, yeah. Like, but, but, yeah, but, but when you're talking about losing a player in free agency because of money, that's very rarely the GM's fault. But they just offered the most money to Wheeler, and they offered the most overall money to Machado, but not guaranteed money, so like twice now. 
uh, the white the, in this specific example, which I know you don't like. I, well, the, not like which I Josh can't. isn't talking about. I, He's not I talking. You're talking about a specific example. Josh is not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> Platitude specific. Yeah, we're yeah. Good. No, I'm. I'm not. I, I, Same combo. Yeah, same combo. But but <laughs> but 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 no, you, you you it's not the GM's not no. ca- I mean teams some teams don't even operate with a GM like in that capacity. The GM has a different role and it's like the it's team- be, they're making up all these roles now in baseball and right. it's fucking confusing. Right. So like they're, they're, they're it's not solely on one What guy. was that made up role Jace Tingler had? <laughs> There's a made up role. With the Rangers? Tough to say. Dude, I, I have to Google it every time. Jace Tingler, new Padres oh, manager. Made up role. I thought you said made up rule. No, was made up role. I love, I, I love that. Yeah. He was like, dude, it was something so stupid. It's like player organized. No, it was quality, 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 quality control, control, like coach. Well, that's like what NF- NFL has that. Yeah. What the fuck's your job? I don't know. I don't, I don't make those up. That but. play wasn't quality. <laughs> <laughs> be like, you know what? That was a rough shift. Yeah. No, that was, that's bad. I want to be the guy who points out bad things at baseball yeah. games. Isn't that yeah. just what fans do? Yeah, yeah that's Twitter. Hey, uh, Lance Lynn, uh, your curveball is not quality today. What do I do to yeah. fix it? I don't know. Go no. talk to the pitching yeah. coach. You just deliver, you just deliver don't ask me. Go that way. Go I ahead. just, I think baseball, um, that's, that's like the worst problem we have now. Forget all the other stuff is that the game is, is worse than it was. And that sucks. Like, I don't. The product? Yeah, the product itself. You think so? Yeah. Do you think because of like analytics type stuff, or do you? Yeah, think- everything's homogenized now, and it's not interesting, and there's less personality in general, or at least it's marketed poorly. Well, yeah, but see, I think the game on the field is fine. I think they need to. They're the, the way th- ban the shift. Yeah, ban it. I was a. In, I was. In, I'm kind of into that. You were because I was into it a while ago. I thought you were against it. I'm not against huh. banning the shift, but like let's modify it a little bit because it pisses me off. Like so give me much. give me feet on the infield or something like yeah, that. That's what I said because when fucking a dude ropes a ball, yep, and it just one that- bounce. But I understand like you're supposed to go the other way, and and like Manfred said, like the game usually corrects well, itself. I, I think you might, but it hasn't. I th- no, it hasn't. So I think, fix it. I think yeah. you're right. Well, when you talk product, I think. Because, I, I mean, guys are throwing harder. Guys can hit balls harder. I, I, I think the product itself is good. I think there was a little blip in the product that was like, I think Mark Teixeira is a perfect example that he's midway through his career. Teams start shifting on him. They can as well. And all of their base hits that they used to pull through first and second instead are a ground out to short right. And, like, that guy's too late in his career to start swinging. So I think we're having a new wave of players that – are going to adjust to a degree. Yeah. Well, and or, we also, or at least you're going to have a better concept that Mark to share that Mark to share instead of the 300 hitter is going to be a 225 hitter. But that fundamentally changed the game for the worst because players have adjusted to something that sucks. But also yeah. like we were talking about Moose going to um, Reds, Cin- Reds. Cincinnati and they're like, well, he's going to play him at second. And you, and then, you know, he played 40 something games last year and he grades out well. And what we said was, well, if you can field and throw shifts can kind of make anyone like into a good fielder. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so wait, we're taking away like good plays now just by science and math. Yep. And, and, that's and I under, I, I, <laughs> I think it's cool that defensive, like you can use the data to benefit you. I do think there's something cool about like some guy like, yo, this guy in this situation, he's probably going to hit it there. So put your player there. And then when they hit it right there, I do think, ah, fuck, smart. But we're taking away diving plays. Yep. We're taking away skilled infielders. Yep. We're taking away exciting baseball. So I, mean, I, I do Yol- think Yolmer Sanchez gets non tendered. He wins the gold oh, glove. Mike wait, Moustakis, please, the please, former third please. baseman's playing I, second I talked, base. I know I talked way too much. You have to edit shit. But like, ask me about the non tender stuff. I know you wanted to do that, and I have. Opinions. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we're good. I mean, it's a, it's a longer episode, but we're having. A, I'm enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, so. I, 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 I'm good right non-tender now. Non tender stuff is crazy. And, and Jake, do you want to explain it for the people? Uh, well, I think. I, a, you know I love passing off stuff. I, I, I kind of want to hear Josh explain. But no, I mean, we, we talked salary and arbitration and stuff like that. But now we've hit this weird fucking bubble where this was supposed to be a way for teams to control the costs on players. And this was supposed to be a benefit to them. Now teams have all this analysis where instead of paying, you know, whatever it was going to be for Yolm or Sanchez, the light hitting but good defensive second baseman. Now they're saying, well, if we were going to send two and a half million on him, we might be able to sign someone in free agency for one and a half million. Um, and and I don't know. I, I mean, Josh, is it just like they just devalued analytics have devalued like one war players? Yeah, it's okay. com- it's completely devalued it. And and they're like, oh, we can pay this guy nine million, or we can just non tender him and pay him less. Yeah. And that's not what the system was was designed I'm, for. The, like like Blake 
Blake Trinan is the one that's the most fucked up to me, for me. It's like, okay, the Oakland A's who, again, we, we won't go into money spending, but we, we know all the thoughts around that. But that should be a guy that the Oakland Athletics are either trading or they're fixing or he's a part of their team because he had one bad year essentially as a reliever. And he's a guy that he won the Rolades Reliever of the Year Award. He did. And now they let him go for nothing. Well, how about this? And it's that, just, who was it's that not other, how the sport's supposed that, to work. Who was the other dude that got sp- non-tendered who had the most innings pitched, most appearances? Oh, yeah, there was some. We I'm, can't think of I'm for, He had the most appearances, Josh, for the team oh, in 2019. Dude. So they used him the most, and he earned oh, whatever yeah. he's earned by doing that. And then they're like, nah, fuck it. So some like, team threw, you a, young relie- a, they threw a young you reliever out there like 80 and plus him. times, and now you're gone. It's funny because fans are like the used to be the catalyst for change. Like, we're not going to watch. We're not going to buy tickets. Like, we want our players. You could have a completely empty stadium, and it won't matter. Like, teams will still be rich. Just the TV money so much? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Ticket sales yeah. do not matter at yeah. all. Mm. At all. But like, you could have an empty stadium and be rich. And the, the thing that pisses me off to no end now, more than anything, is when I hear from – fans that come, they'll come up to me oh you're an agent you know you're the reason ticket prices are so expensive players you know free like i hear about marvin miller this whole you know the two days i've been here you know marvin's the reason a family of four can't go to a game it's like shut up you guys all of a sudden love communism so <laughs> so no you were talking to some russians before so yeah, that so could have been the issue my family's ukrainian so um it's a true story kuznick um but uh the thing that bothers me more than anything is 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 fans saying stuff like that yeah. About about that being so you know so expensive for a family to go to a game and it's the player's fault. My question is if in spring it's not that expensive to go to a game. Rega- like people are being re- regardless. People that, just like that excuse. Like you can go to a Yankee game for like twenty bucks. I know you but, bring your own food. They let you bring your own sandwiches. But let's say that's the excuse. My question is is okay. So in spring training, right? You've been to spring training. We all been to spring training. Yeah. Um, players don't get paid in spring training. Why aren't the tickets free? Ah, good good counter. The Joy Russ. Yeah, so, like, stop blaming the fucking players for ticket prices. Like, this is ownership's fault, just like it is for everything. Before we wrap it up, uh, one By more. By the way, I'm going to be super popular with the teams this week after yeah. this podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go live right now. <laughs> now uh, last tag, just don't tag Brody in this, please. <laughs> last time you had, uh, we had you on, you made a point that I thought was really, really good and really important for fans to understand. Not like this interview. No. No, uh, no, this no. Is, it's, this it's, has it, all been already deleted. <laughs> 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 We're recording into the void right now. We did record, and then we just said no. It's like, no. you, ever, you ever see the movie Wet Hot American Summer? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The kid oh, who's recording God. without oh, the, the radio plugged I love, in. Beehive. I love Wet Hot the Beehive. Summer, yeah. Man. All right, um, sorry. <laughs> no, so, so the point you made was like Charlie Morton and all these guys, spin rate is what they're, they have. That's the tangible stat that, fan, that teams look at and teams pay for in free agency. But in arbitration, you're. You're, you're only allowed to uh, arbit, is that would be the word? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> based on specific stats that were agreed upon by the before analytics. CBA. Before analytics. So We're using an old system. So RBIs and saves get rewarded. Yeah, and games started get rewarded, and now the opener fucked that, and, and the Rays. But that's why that happened. I know the Rays were dancing around, and we're like, oh, they reinvented baseball. And it has been a good strategy sometimes. Hey, I think it's but a cool strategy. Yeah. they didn't want to pay but a lot of guys. That was what it was born out of. Yeah, so. Hey, don't so, forget Jeremy Jeffers when I was representing him last year. He started a game. There you go. That yeah. was weird. Yeah. Um, he got in a bat. So I don't, I, I don't know if there's anything. There's no development that, but I just think that's so interesting that in free agency, you get paid for all these. Yeah, you do. You get paid for all these things. Yet when you're young and you go through arbitration, they're like, uh, "Well, what's we also don't, interesting is about your spin rate. How many innings did you pitch?" I'll tell you, a cool development I didn't see coming. Teams are using analytics to scout Asia, and that's helping them get guys like whoever to come back. Like Miles Nicholas came back from Asia, yeah. So that's good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, okay. it can be cool. used for good too. But, yeah. Um, it also is just it doesn't. I'm a big fan of the hybrid uh, where you need old school. Scouting. Everything's about balance. Right. But there are people that want to, like, there are teams that want to eliminate the scouting department, just go straight analytics. And wow, those like, teams will fail. Like we talked about earlier, um, you don't get a gauge on aptitude and makeup with yeah. stuff like that. And more importantly, though, what I do like, and I can comment, and it's not a good place to close if I don't tell a joke. Um, oh, we might need one joke. Yeah, we'll do one. Yeah, we'll get one. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, God, I'm going to have to go through my set list. But, um, wow, I totally threw myself there. 
It's something good that was happening. Oh, analytics. Japanese players using analytics. Yeah, Japanese analytics. Nah, I don't remember. Analytics. Lost thought into the void. And when I listen to this, I'm going to remember a point. I'll text you and we can okay. just edit it back. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. But perfect. um, but yeah. So we'll close with a joke, I guess. Let me let me go through yeah. the set list here. So right, for nice. real, I I got to open for Mitch Hedberg, Jim Jefferies, Greg Geraldo. Yeah, we had a fun time talking about uh, Mitch on Talking Yanks. So. I do. I do like it's probably an evergreen episode, guys. So go back and listen to yeah. Talking Yanks. I, I do Josh. love how old I've gotten, where people are like, "Who are those people?" Comedy changes. Like stuff that was funny twenty years ago generally is not funny now. Like comedy changes. Bill, do you know Mitch Hedberg? Oh, you're out. <laughs> Can you leave? Like, <laughs> I don't. Good. I don't mean the table. I mean literally San Diego. Get uh, the fuck out of Mitch, here, Mitch. I and I think we did this a little bit. I I wasn't the biggest Mitch fan originally. Like I just. I mean, I the, knew him, the, so like, I know. I'm, I know. I'm old. Right, right, right. But like, I I still appreciate. Like, There's nobody like Hedberg. I thing, still appreciate. Just Mitch like Hedberg. Marvin Miller not getting to live to his Hall of Fame speech is like the greatest tragedy of Hall of Fame. Speech. Mitch not getting a Twitter. Mitch not getting a Twitter is yeah. the yeah. worst thing to no, ever happen. No, you are right. Yeah, yeah. Mitch all together. Yeah, go listen to Mitch. He had, he I have had that like CD signed by him. He had terrible stage fright, and he'd like go out there, and he wouldn't look at the audience. This is a he closed his eyes. He did his whole set with his eyes closed. <laughs> he used to on some shows. And it was just like really quirky humor. <laughs> so wait, okay, I'm going to riff on this one. Like, I, don't okay. want, I don't want to tell like a totally set joke here, but I, I'm going to ask this since I, you guys are the right generation. How old are you guys? 30. 30. Excellent. Did you guys see the Harry Potter movies? He did. Yeah. I did not. Me neither. I've never read the books. Same. I know nothing of Harry Potter. This okay. is going to like be a story joke. Okay. We're going to, you and I will walk through this. Yeah. So I went to Universal Studios. They have Harry Potter land there. Yeah. Everything is exactly like the movies there, right? I think. I've never <laughs> seen. But everything's exactly like the movie. Maybe. And behind me, when you walk into Harry Potter land at Universal, there's a giant wall, huge wall of owls, like fake owls that are there. Okay. In the book, somebody told me, that Harry Potter is an owl. They have something called an owlry, and they use owls to deliver the mail. Send messages, yeah. So I've never seen this world, right? Yeah. I have one question. If they have magic, why owls? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty fair point. So, like, they have subjugated... <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no yeah. I thought we were going to play off the joke. But I was going to say, more. they have subjugated... An entire species. Like, do you know how much it must suck to be an owl in yeah, the Harry yeah. Potter universe? You guys can just do this <laughs> like, with your hands. Yeah, yeah like, you guys you have can magic. transport Like, instantly. they must have wanted to, like, dominate a species like that. Yeah. Like, that's awful. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, they took the species with the most wisdom and made him a slave. <laughs> <laughs> that's Harry Potter for you folks. I think that happened in Egypt to my people once. Where, oh, uh, boy. Josh, oh, where, boy. hello, where can, <laughs> what, what do you need to plug? You're... Oh, uh, your Twitter. A. Uh, uh, I'm starting an esports consulting company. We're starting a platform that we built upon last year. Like the, the genesis for it was the winter meetings last year. So like a year later, we're we're Doing getting cl- closer to launching. Uh, I'm on the Twitters and uh, at at Joshua at, Kuznick? At, at Joshua Kuznick and and my Instagram is at Joshua underscore Kuznick. And everyone that tw- uh, that listened to this and watched this tweeted him and tell him how how much you enjoyed it. And I I I enjoy you in the game of baseball. Yeah, I'm not going to ba- leave. I'm the baseball gonna... needs more, but if there is an exit, there won't be a total exit. I want to tell be all. there. I want to be there that day on Twitter. I'm inter- <laughs> I'm interviewing. I'm actually I'm interviewing with publishers this week because I want to write a book about my career. Do it now because I don't. You know, I'm I'm in the back half, and uh, the other part of it. Uh, this is this is my. Po- I'll, I'll postulate this. We'll break. We'll, we'll do this here. This is what you wanted. Okay. So my 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 observation here is that you watch you watch ESPN. Yeah. So their NFL coverage. You know they have yeah. Drew, you know they have Drew Rosenhaus on all the time talking about agent shit. Yeah, yeah. They don't have that for baseball. No, I want that job. Do it. Do it. No, I am. Yeah. I, I love talking about my job way more than doing it. <laughs> Are you friends with Passan? Yes. Okay. Like heavily. There you go. Jeff and I go way back. Yeah, make yeah. it happen. I mean, I also represent John Butchergrass currently. Right, right, right. There you go. So, yeah. which I feel like I'm the asshole for like assuming people knew that. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but like I, I'm, I'm gonna try to talk to those. I want to do more media, and uh, and yeah, cool. Thanks Josh for, Cousin, thanks for ESPN me. reporter. Uh, oh, I won't be a reporter. I'll be like ESPN <laughs> insider. Agri- no, I'd be like like has anyone, analyst. Has anyone ever referred to Stephen A. Smith by any of those names? <laughs> analyst, journalist, respected the guy, man, just the guy, man. ESPN guy. No, I'm gonna be yelling guy. <laughs> yelling, okay, good. Hawaiian part, shirt, yelling part guy. Part two. I'll wear this. Yeah. All right. Thank you, man. Take care. Let it run. Built in the song. <laughs>